Correspondence 2020 is a series of works that are supported with postcards that I have received throughout my life in different places where I have lived. So it recreates my life in a certain way of all those different places. This show will be viewed or on view until February 13th. The hours for the gallery are Thursday through Saturday from 11 to 7. It is a pleasure for me to be able to do this work this year and also be able to show it the very same year. You know, um, and to be here in Atlanta. I've never done a solo exhibition here in Atlanta, so I guess it's it's a good time to do it now. And um, I thank Gerardo for supporting my work. And as he said, this is something that we've been wanting to do for years, uh, ever since he's had the gallery. And now it came to the moment when we thought, well, no, this is a good time. And he had seen some of the work that I was doing this year earlier in the spring. So the year just kept going and rolling and rolling and I kept producing work. So it just became the perfect moment to do it. But the, the year kept going and then it, all of a sudden it's November and we thought, well, we have to do it now before you know the year is over. It's now or never. <laughs> so that's pretty much how the, the year has gone. And we may not see a lot of the works tonight, but we will show a few, but maybe at some point somewhere we can upload them somewhere and, and people can see a bit more of the show. Cool. So for those who uh, haven't seen uh, Karen's work before or are not familiar with her work, I'm going to do like a brief presentation of her work and I will uh, go through a few exhibitions she has done before. So I will start by saying that one of the most important exhibitions that Karen has had lately was Radical Women. She was part of this exhibition curated by Andrea Junta and Cecilia Fardo Hill. Uh, it was an exhibition uh, that went from uh, the Hammer Museum in LA uh, to the Brooklyn Museum in New York and then to the Pinacoteca Nacional in, in Sao Paulo. If Karen uh, heard something that is not accurate of what I'm saying, you please correct me. This is uh, the catalog of radical women. Uh, and this is the illustrations of her work in the uh, book. Uh, some of them she's cited in the uh, this part of the book that states about the erotism as part of her the work of these uh, artists at that period uh, is staying like uh, basically her, her approach um, and how was this important in that terms of the 60s to the 80s in Latin America. Um, then this is another uh, example of her work published in the El Arte de la Desobediencia at the Museo de Arte Moderno in Bogota. Uh, with this uh, video, it was called Ruido, uh, on these uh, storyboards that she made. Uh, I don't know, Karen, if you want to talk a little bit about yeah, this well, this, work. This was a show, am I, can you hear me? Yes. yes um, this was a show at the Museum of Modern Art in Bogota that they did a couple of years ago. Um, with the collection of the museum. So these are works of artists that have participated in the museum in various shows from the 60s until the mid 80s. And the work that is shown here of mine on the left is um, called 24 frames per second. This is after I had worked in film, um, I did this work which were small drawings on a large piece of paper 24 drawings that would 
animate or create an animation. And so I was doing some homages to different artists. And here on the right side is the artist that I was doing a homage to, which was Dario Morales, a Colombian artist. And he always used to paint his wife on this chair, kind of in uncomfortable positions, I thought. In any case, the illustration on the left is an animation of this woman on the chair where she moves and she falls off the chair and the, and the lamp just kind of swings. So this was a, a show that took place in the 80s in Colombia. And I am part of the collection of the museum because of this work. The, cool. the show was interesting. It was called The Art of Disobedience. So we were all kind of artists that went against or, or did things outside of the box, I guess I could say. Cool, so then um, uh, there was also this um, other exhibition at the Museo Nacional de Colombia um, that is called Voces Intimas in 2017, where she participated with these pieces, part of the theme that kind of works a lot with these bathrooms. So this is, you can see, like self-reference images in there and a, the bathroom is a presence, a continuous presence in her work. A, this was a, at the Museo del Rayo, Museo Rayo in Colombia. A, this is... A, These are all works from the 70s and early 80s. They were watercolors that I did. I used to do a lot of watercolor back then. So a lot of interiors and works with the figure, with the human figure, a lot, most of them were self-portraits or using mirrors. So pretty much that is all this body of work that you're seeing with all the watercolors. Cool. And yes. I did do a large series of bathrooms. Good. So, and then this is a larger review of her work that it was made at the Museo La Tertulia where it was a larger body of her work shown. Uh, with different bodies and moments uh, of her pieces. So you could see like this series of the giants and then uh, these uh, other series. Karen, I don't remember what's the name of these series. These are um, a series of fo photos that I did that um, I would um, do the photography and then intervene them or, or color on top of them with crayons. These were called um, wet, wet dreams. And this show was 2017. It was a large show of work of mine from the 70s to like 1989. So the 70s and the 80s. A lot of the work from the 70s I didn't use a camera for. And then there were some like the giant people that you were showing had out of those works. Those are works a homage to the city of Cali where I lived. And so I did photography work of the city and then of this couple that posed for me in very sensual positions in the city and, and very specific landmarks of the city of Cali. And um, so that is the, the way that I did those paintings is through photography and then painted large acrylic paintings. Good, then there is this, uh, another um, book that was published by Museo Nacional de Colombia, where it's more like about film. So it it gets some images about uh, this storyboard that Karen did for this movie that it was called Pura Sangre. And then we get to the point where Karen is now part of this uh, textbook that we've been joking a lot about. You know how she ended up being like a textbook after uh, being so disobedient and being in the radical woman uh, review and now it's part of the studies of the text for some of the students that are going now through some disciplines as fine arts or anthropology uh, i don't know Karen, if you want to talk a bit about the experience of this uh, book, or are we ready to go to 
a, a few images of the exhibition. Um, here is part of the uh, show. We are gonna do a little sur survey of how the pieces are displayed. And then I'll give the word to Karin to talk about the show and I'll stop uh, sharing my uh, screen to give the word to Karin and start hearing her talking about her work and this experience. Well, um, this all began, this work, well, I've, I have a huge postcard collection um, of postcards that people have sent me and postcards that I've bought at the museums, you know, as an artist, that was usually what one could afford at the museums was to buy a postcard. So some are post blank postcards. And then I've kept a lot that um, I've corresponded with people throughout the years. We, we used to write a lot of letters years ago and postcards was a kind of quick way of sending just a, almost like an Instagram, like a text, you know, you would, you would um, write it and you'd be traveling, but you just wanted to say, hey there, you know, how are you doing? Or I'm doing this or here, here I am. And it was a way of communicating with your friends, you know, before we had telephones and uh, new smartphones, you know, before. I, I was thinking the other day how I even had in my wallet, I would carry an emergency stamp <laughs> in case. I wanted all of a sudden to mail somebody a postcard. I had an emergency stamp in my, in my wallet and I could write a postcard to anybody, any given moment and put it in a, in a what do they call The mailboxes that, you know, they were just out on the street. I mean, that was the way that you would communicate with friends and they would write you back, you know, they would write you long letters and, and um, so I, through the years, you know, a lot of corresponding. And last year I had a very dear friend of mine pass away. And when I came back from Colombia where this person lived, cause I was there visiting last year, it was actually, actually like a year ago, exactly. I, um, I came back and I was going through some of that correspondence that I had had with that friend. And I, something that I often do with all of these letters and postcards and I, it's kind of a reflection on the past and, and the present. And it's a, it's a way of, I guess, seeing where you are at that moment. But um, so I would look at these postcards from this friend, and letters, and uh, I would start, you know, grieving and crying. And it was all very cathartic, you know, this moment of, of being able to read these words from this person that no longer can write me, no longer can call me. And it, it's kind of a reflection on yourself, you know, of, of what you no longer are or what you want to be or where you are, you know, it really is a, like a thermometer into the person that you are at the moment. So this person in, brought about this, motivation, you know, to do all this work, because I realized I have all these postcards, I should do something with all these cards, with all these moments throughout my life, all these people, some of them are here, a lot of them aren't. And um, so I thought, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this with the postcards? And should I photograph them? Should I scan them? I mean, there's so much technology nowadays. But I would take the actual postcard and I thought, but you know, nothing can really replace this actual card. And I was able to, in the frayed edges of the cards, just split them, you know, because postcards are two pieces of paper glued together. And I was able to unglue them and put them onto paper. And then I started painting on top of this paper and the pandemic hit. You know, and so that also kind of made everything more introspective, you know, as the time went by, because 
I started really getting into more of these postcards and just digging deeper. And, and every time I would split one of those cards and put it down on paper, you know, it was a way of, of going back to that person or a reflection on that person. Maybe you could show one of those first cards that I will. Uh, yes, I was about to, to so that ask me that, yes. Can see more closely. Like here, you see the two sides of the postcard that I've glued on there. And, and you can see addresses, you can see the, the message that the person is writing. So for me, it was creating something from the image of this card. Because also one of the interesting things about um, the cards that I would get from my friends is that they, when they would buy this card they thought of me and so I don't know I, I by putting this card on this piece of paper and then uh, applying paint on there I used acrylic paint things just started coming out because they would be born of the card but then the image here that you see on the other part of that body in an embrace really has nothing to do with the card but it does because it, it comes out of there so it's very much an Karin, I guess we stopped hearing you. And the way the hair kind of drips down. And it's a film. It said, my internet connection is unstable. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. This is a film, you know, of Brian De Palma. I think it's in English, it's called Dress to Kill. But this is... Um, a French small poster. You could probably look at another one. This is also another card. Um, well, of course, they're all cards. Another thing that's interesting for me of all of this, I've, I've always really collected a lot of graphics and I love the stamps and the airmail kind of um, stickers that all of these have as well. I, I have a collection of all kinds of stamps, not postage stamps, but seals, I guess you could say, and a lot of graphics. I just love all of the graphics that go with, um, with these stamps. Sometimes I would want to cover some of these. This one is very beautiful. That one's from Paris. And to me, when I was in New York, it's also a diary of sorts, you know, a way of going back, a letter that wasn't written. Here's another. I'm sorry, Karin, I guess I went too fast oh, to the next one. It's good to show another one. OK. I'm going to show very many. This is also um, a card that, of course, the person sent me because I had this fascination with bathrooms. And in this case, um, the card is of a photograph of a a photographer that I really like, Dwayne Michaels. So it's kind of a double whammy there. And in some of these uh, cards also, one of the things that I wanted to do was to make the, the ink of the card run. If, if I could use that, that ink also to incorporate it into the work, if that worked, you know, that was kind of an added thing to it to really make it become part of, of the new work. is something someone sent me from England. And then here, as you saw in some of the works that we saw previously, where I did a series of giant people in the city, I kind of took that theme of mine, you know, and just made this large women, woman in this little city. It just seemed very apropos for, for this one to bring in that um, imagery that I've had in my work before. Um, I had a really good time doing these, you know, some, some would bring back uh, memories of people that are gone. And some people are still here. This is the one from the invitation, the Venice. It's such a, this is a very, um, 
logrado. Very successful, I think, or it just really evokes an, a mood, you know, of, of that place. Or a mood of a, of a moment, of a, of a landscape in there. Also, uh, I repeat that figure, that female figure that I've used a lot in my work. I don't know if anyone. Cool. So that was a beautiful uh, pass through the images, and I guess it'll be a good moment now, cutting to uh, open the conversation and see if somebody wants to uh, ask some questions or like uh, want to know anything we were planning to have the chat uh, open for the q a but i guess we're uh, mostly you know people that we know each other so uh, if somebody wants to just participate and say you know what cool cool perfect i have a question sure karen you you said that the you know the postcards reminded you of certain times and certain people. And it's, you know, you can see how you're responding visually to what's on the, you know, the image side of the postcard. Are you ever also responding to the text, to the actual message that they sent you? Yes, of course, yeah. They, some of them are, are funny moments, others are, are sad. And sometimes I will, um, try to run, if the ink runs, that's actually, I don't know, I, I kind of really wish that a lot more of the ink that people wrote with would have run, you know, because then it really becomes more a part of the, of the work. But yes, a, a lot of them are um, very deep, some are love, love expressions of love, you know, there's so many different, um, layers but of course yes i'm also reacting to my relationship with that person or mm -hmm. what that moment what was happening to me trying to relive something but at the same time you're recreating something you know you're making it different as well so it was very very it's very personal i guess the whole thing you know but i i i hoped that People who have corresponded, you know, through uh, postcards could see or could identify a lot with this work, you know, because it's kind of when you read those postcards, it's like what you imagine, you know, that that person was going through or we imagine things, you know, because we might see that photograph of, of Piccadilly Circus, but then at the same time, we try to imagine, I don't know what, what that person could be thinking when that person is there. This one, yeah, like, uh, and then <laughs> some of the things that they write are very funny. When we had the show here, people that would, that didn't know the people, but they would read some of the notes, um, they would laugh. I mean, some of them are, there's one postcard of a friend that he is uh, in Ibiza and he's writing about the, party of the olives that he had been to that Fleetwood Mac appeared at the party in a discotheque and it was the olive party because they all were naked and they were rubbing olive oil all over their bodies so there's a lot of really <laughs> crazy expressions here too you know yeah so it is kind of a, a specific selection that I've made of 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 postcards that are special to me. Some of these cards also have really accompanied me through the years because the, the photograph on it was so cool or, or whatever, you know, that I had it pinned up in my studio for a long time. So they actually have accompanied me, you know, they have been there. Cool, any other? Hey, Karen. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing your work yesterday. I'd head out of those. 
Okay. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and I'm just, I'm struck by, first of all, the presentation. I, I'm not familiar with your, your previous work, um, but I'm seeing now these frames as almost like time capsules that, that, are, that contain little expressions of your previous work, even some of the, uh, the more sort of a four-dimensional uh, animation looking, the, the, the film inspired work Mm -hmm. the, the, had a series that, that was reminiscent of Muybridge. Right. Uh, yeah. And, I, and then I also saw a little bit of Francis Bacon there. Okay. So anyway, so, so it, it just struck me that these, these, uh, these parcels are not just, the, it, they're kind of paradoxical. They're, they're parcels insofar as they're transient, but they're also time capsules. So you're sort of freezing um, uh, the last, what, 40 years of your life into these um, into these almost ephemeral pieces. So it's, a, I, I'm just struck by the, the paradox there that it, it's, it's kind of a fun, uh, beautiful statement there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and you know, actually, if you, they really are that, you know, they're, and they're floating, you know, the, mm -hmm. the boxes that we created for them, they're like floating, they're transient, as you said, it's not like a permanent thing. Yeah. And, almost like a, a take on life as well. I mean, we come and we go. So many things have happened this year also, you know. So many people have passed, you know. It's, it's kind of, it just was born this year, you know, this whole idea. Um, I guess you could say it corresponds, not just to corresponding, you know, to the written word, but it corresponds with, with the moment, you know. The, the front and the back of the car correspond. There's so many different um, readings that just the word corresponds has but but I agree they are kind of like in little time capsules these boxes because they're also we were trying to mimic like a crate right you know when you when you transport things so they're they're floating in there in these little uh, crates you know they're they're going from one place to the other and you know it's also kind of mimicking that whole process, you know, of, of the postcard, of the travel, traveling in time. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you for coming. Yeah, there's um, one of the oldest cards is from 1963. It's from my mother. She sent to me from Europe. She was in I don't know where the, I think the card is from Baden Baden from a um, casino that she had been at. So it's a postcard from when I was still a young girl. And then one of the latest ones was from 2016. So I still get postcards. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting to see that this year, a lot of people are getting more into corresponding sending postcards, sending mail. It's something that's just happening more because people need to, you know, to go to a new uh, way of expressing themselves or people are doing Zoom, but people actually want to re receive something physical, you know, or going back to that mode. Yeah, but it, it is kind of a lost, I don't know if I want to call it an art, but, but it's something that's, that's been lost, you know, the correspondence, that, um, the way we used to correspond. Now everything is so, it just, it disappears, you know, it's, it's viral, it's, it's uh, not so tangible, you know, it's not something that you can physically put on a piece of paper and write around it, you know, it becomes more complicated. So I guess it's also kind of a, a way to preserve these moments, but I'm turning them into something else. And I'm also letting go, you know? I also, this whole thing was about letting go of these memories of, or of these people that, you know, no longer are with us, that it's a way of letting go of them, you know? So Karen, I wanted to go to just exactly what you just said, because part of the observations I have had when I, people comes to visit the exhibition is like, but these are copies of the 
postcards, right? Like these are not the postcards, postcards, or or uh, they're they're not all hers, right? And I'm like, no, no, no. All of them are like postcards that Colin has received through her uh, her life. And yes, these are the postcards. They are not the copies of the postcards. They are like the actual thing. And part of the question is like, how she will detach from this like treasure memory and put it out there and let it go, you know, like, like so. So that's a, a question I have had like more than once. So I wanted you to go through that particular fact of like the creation of the artwork as a detaching tool of, of a memory. Well, as I said, you know, before where the whole idea of this came about was that I was grieving the loss of this friend and, and I wanted to do, create something with this memory. But if I really think about it, all of the works that I've ever done as an artist, they're all moments when I'm creating, you know, whatever it is, the drawing that I'm doing or the moment that I'm creating, they're all moments that I, I put either on canvas, on paper, and if I do a show, then they go away, you know? It's, it's like once you, already been created you know sort of like it, it 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 can all it can go away easily you know but but i can see how people look at these cards i mean i saved them all these years right but i think i saved them was for this moment was to be able to let go of them you know, so that they would become something else everything I, everything has a reason you know and i i do save a lot of things as an artist always thinking I'm going to use this for, for some works that I want to do. But, um, but yeah, I think as an artist, one is always letting go of memories and letting go of ideas and, and you go. What's amazing is sometimes years later, I will see a work that I haven't seen in 20, 25 years. Uh, recently in, in Cali, a friend said, oh, I have this uh, painting that you did in 1975, these airbrush paintings I did. But it looks like your signature has faded. Can you, you know, redo your signature? And I thought, wow, it would be amazing to see that painting. I haven't seen it. And when I saw it, oh my God, I wish I hadn't seen it. It looked so bad. It had the worst. <laughs> it really aged terribly, you know? So it's kind of like seeing your children also that have gone away. And then sometimes you're really glad to see them because they look so beautiful. You know, that, that I've had the, the, the fortune to be able to see beautiful works of mine that I say, wow, the color on this is so vibrant, you know, or so sometimes you let go of those things and sometimes then they come back to you. It's strange, you know, when that happens. Well, one of the, one of the pieces in the show that is right behind you is a postcard of one of your shows that came back to you as a postcard. Oh yeah. <laughs> Right. Yes, but I guess we still have a, a few minutes more, so we should take, you know, like uh, any other questions or any other observations from somebody else. Anybody? Who okay, me again. Um, what's with your obsession with bathrooms? Well, I did that series in, in the 70s. I first did my first bathrooms. I had this um, little house. It was like the first place when, when I left home. You know, I was 21. I left home. I had my own little place. And the bathroom was like in the outside in the, in the patio. You know, it wasn't like, it was a patio with rooms around it is what the house was. But the bathroom was outside and, um, that was where I did my first bathrooms, was in that little house. And I was doing a lot of works with the figure and it, like 
in the interiors of homes and all this. And I don't know, a couple of years later, I did a show in Cali that was just bathrooms, you know, and, and it wasn't a, really an obsession. It was more, the bathroom is one of the places where you can go in and you can lock the door and it's fine, right? I mean, there's, people are okay with you locking the door. Usually people want you to close the door when you go into the bathroom. So it's a place where you're really with yourself. It's intimate. Um, I guess more for that reason, I don't know. And also I, I found beauty in all of these old bathrooms. They were mostly really old ones with all the little tile work. And then from that, I started doing a lot of works that had just tile floors, you know? So it was also just, uh, it's like the old cars, you know, all those old cars that were really kind of voluptuous, you know, the sinks had, they looked like they were like um, animate, you know, they, they didn't look like they were just something cold. They looked like they had a soul in them, you know, and I guess it's from just spending time in the bathroom or, or being in the bathroom stoned out of my mind or I don't know that I would just see bathrooms in a different way also you know they um, I don't know it was just something that just happened well that's that's interesting because you, you do have a lot of unguarded moments in a bathroom right and um it's yeah the way your your body just sort of is it's it's an interesting glimpse of that. It's, I think it's fascinating that your artistic eye was drawn to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, you're very free in a bathroom. You know? I mean, you're by yourself, you can be naked, you, and it's okay. And, you know, sometimes if, if there's only one bathroom in the house, people might you know, want to be using the bathroom, but, but usually it's a place where you can really relax and thing, I always thought when I was taking a shower that my problems, they would just all go kind of down the drain. You know, you just, yeah. you bathe, you know, it's clean, it's fresh. I don't know, there's so many beautiful things about bathrooms, but then there's also like Psycho, <laughs> the movie, Hitchcock, you know, where there's <laughs> crime scene in, in, in a bathroom, you know, so it can have, you know, many different connotations. I remember uh, when I lived in Cali, I, when I would take a shower, I would put on the music of Psycho and Bernard Herrmann for a while. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that music is really intense. Um, but yeah, it was just something I went through in the bathroom. And so um, also when I did that bathroom series in Colombia, it, when I first did the show in Cali, they took it down like three days after it was up. It was censored. When, you know, there isn't really anything kind of mm. that you would censor them for, but it was a, a room that it was a multi-purpose room. And there was uh, somebody giving a, a, not a speech, but a conference. And so the man that was giving the conference, I guess all of the people that were in the room were more interested in what was on the walls than what he was talking about. So he says, cannot continue with all these obscenities hanging in front of me and wow. the whole show taken down and then he continued his conference and they were about 20 paintings so it wasn't like a small show and so after that um i was able to take the show to different cities and they all wanted to see it you know the obscenities but they aren't really obscene they're just they're very clean actually yeah, no obscenity. But that's just kind of a, a little story there that, that, um, that the whole bathroom series had. So Karen, I think your work is great. I haven't ever seen somebody do this with a postcard, you, you know, and I think these uh, days it's kind of hard to be um, original. So it's really refreshing and um, I love the way that you take the curb or something in the postcard and extend that into the painting. And you've always done great uh, 
female uh, um, figure. So now you've got your big cityscapes and your female figures and this postcard and the handwriting. And it just feels so rich. Um, and you're right, I, I just sent out some handwritten letters to people, you know, I had to tell people, I said, I sent you a card. Really? <laughs> you know, it's just like, no, I go, yeah, I sent you a live letter or package. And I really realized seeing these cards, how much I miss seeing people's uh, handwriting, because mm -hmm. it often reflects their uh, soul, right? And um, yeah. And it, and, it felt, and it actually felt good to write to people, you know, it feels much more uh, personal. And um, yeah, so yeah, it's great work. I'd like to see it all. Is there a way we can see all the pictures at some point or? Um, yeah, well, maybe I could share some with you and um, maybe on in Gerardo in the website of the gallery, we could get some up. Um, yes, yes. Um, um, uh, we are planning to to release a, a few of them more in social media and um, probably Karen can share some with you privately we, we we didn't want to go through every part of the show during the presentation and um, it it was a window of about an hour that we wanted to we didn't want to have the talk for so long. We appreciate all the time that you have devoted to us. So we didn't want it to be especially long. So we have decided to, to cut it to like five pieces. Maybe it was a little bit short, but definitely we are gonna release some more uh, images in, in the Instagram page of the gallery and in the Instagram page of Karen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I will be. Yeah, Very. during the uh, exhibition length that it would go again until like February 13. Okay. And it's interesting to hear your take on everything, Debbie, because Debbie is a, a friend from high school. Yeah. <laughs> she, she has, we used to work in the art room together. So she really has <laughs> worked through the years and, and, um, Sorry, the, my there's and there a, is a postcard. <laughs> there's a postcard from Debbie here. <laughs> One of the works is a postcard that you sent from a trip you went to Washington. It was in 1972. And you sent me a postcard of Richard Nixon. Oh my God. <laughs> Not that I was for him. Yeah. And I turned him into a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> like a sexy Nixon. Uh, I will send that one to you. But yeah. It, <laughs> I've had a lot of fun, you know, really it has been uh, incredible. And all of a sudden I just realized I have like 50 of them, you know, and we thought, wow, we can do a show with this for sure. Yeah, but, they're great. Yeah, really. I just wanted to say hi, Anna. My sisters are there and Joyce. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. It's so good to see you. It's good to see everyone that, that came. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, this, this is my um, I think there are three of my postcards maybe in that show. Three that I know of, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. So th thanks to my family and my great friends, I was able to do this work. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here, you know? It's, it's relationships and friendships and and communication, you know, and corresponding. So we all should write each other more, I guess, I don't know. We used to always write each other, especially with my sisters. We were always sending letters to each other. Yeah. And we would write back, hey, you owe me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> there was always that, you know, who wrote the last one? I have a question. How difficult was it to choose the postcards that you did go through, the 50 out of the million postcards that you do have? How, did, how were you able to, to sort the ones or sort through the ones that you actually wanted to use? Well, was it more of a memory? Was it something more personal, a reaction? I, I guess a little bit of that, but also I think it's the graphic that is on the card. I mean, the collection okay. of cards that you see in the show, they're really 
funky, they're cool, they're funny, they're, yeah. they're really um, a, a, an amazing collection. So also that kind of gives you a, a hint as to, or it gave me a hint as to what people thought of me or they thought, oh, this card is perfect for Karen. This is, I'm gonna send it to her. But I don't have, I had a few that were just like a city, kind of a boring postcard, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like just a cityscape or, but even those you could put like this giant woman there, right? It just depends what you do with that, with that photograph. So no, I, I mean, I still even have more. I still have more and, and, and I separated them. So I may, you know, do a few more just to finish, to finish the series, you know, but at some point, and then this work takes me, it's already taken me to ideas for new work. So something always comes out of, uh, out of the work, you know, something new, like what that takes you to. Yeah. So that's been a nice journey also, but what a year this year, you know, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us have been able to, for me, it wasn't so difficult because I don't go to like to an office every day. I don't have children. I'm used to being, you know, at home working. And for me, it was, delicious it was like the best thing that could have happened because I had to stay home I couldn't you know say oh I'm gonna go out or no just stay home and then it really made me work so but for a lot of people that's not life that's not the way you know normally they have their lives they're not lone lone soldiers lone people you know a lot of people are used to being around all their co-workers in their office and all that so mm -hmm. kind of like all these friends in these postcards kept me alive too. <laughs> yeah. Karin, I just wanted to like for wrap up the, the artist talk, mm -hmm. go for a minute to the name of the show that is correspondence. You know, like it's definitely related with postcard and correspondence, but you have also had some other meanings to the idea of correspondence, like how one thing corresponds to another one. Also, I love the idea in a lot of your work that is getting out of that square of what is represented in the, in the postcard and create another thing that is not there. You know, like what else should be like outside of that frame? Yeah, well, maybe that's the unwritten letter. <laughs> You're asking me about the card I haven't written yet. Um, well, you know, basically I think it's that, that it all corresponds, you know, corresponds with the year the front and the back of the card correspond to each other. It's about people that correspond to me, not just that they write to me, but when something is corresponding, it belongs to, you know, it's not just that it, that it's written. I believe that the word corresponding also means that it belongs, you know, it corresponds here. You know? So there's, there's so many, it's a wonderful word. There's so many readings that you could give that word, you know? And I guess that's why it came about. Also, what's amazing is that um, that friend that passed away, he, with another friend, had put out a book that coincidentally is about correspondence of a friend of theirs from the past. It's all about letters that that person had written. And that book was just published this year. So that also, that's very coincidental that I thought that this work that I was doing should, should be called correspondence. But it's almost like we were on the same wavelength, you know, me and that friend of mine. It's like he, it just really corresponds, you know? Good, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, <laughs> that, that was magical. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think it, 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 it kind of wraps it up, like kind of rounds, mm -hmm. yeah, the absence and the presence. Yeah. There, yeah. 
Well, Karen is uh, 735, like uh, I would think we should say bye uh, to everybody, but uh, not before saying thank you, you know, for all the time you guys have devoted to us, but especially to Karen for making this exhibition possible, for trusting me to do the show and uh, for the happiness that represents to have her here in the gallery and, and for her words and her presence today. Well, thank you as well. I really want to thank everyone and, and you helped make it possible, Gerardo, so I really appreciate that. And we'll figure out how I can get whoever is very far away to be able to see a lot of these images that I have. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, it's still a pleasure. Um, wow. we, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good. So. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.